Hey, everybody, welcome to the Hire My VA team and business building podcast brought to you by YouGoZ.com and Victory. And in this podcast and at Hire My VA, we help you to reclaim your freedom through hiring and thriving with virtual assistants without breaking the bank. And that means your bank. And my name's Dave Braun. And hopefully by now you've heard us, but um, if not, then you know I'm here with a great um, business partner of mine, fantastic friend, mentor, coach. Um, we're going to be going in a few minutes, I think, Larry, to our, our uh, guys group tonight. And yep. man, I'm looking forward to that. So oh, no, me too. what is up? It is good to see you, handsome David. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. You make me laugh every time you say that. It's like, well, really? Yes, really. And guess Own what? It. People are starting to call me that. Now. I know. We were on a live <laughs> earlier today, and I got this long message from this woman who's been on our book club. And if you don't know, we run a monthly leaders or readers book club. And she sent me this long message, but it was so good to connect with you with you and to meet handsome Dave. <laughs> and <laughs> like, oh, like it, it stuck. <laughs> It's better than the alternative, my friend. What what is it that they what is it that they say? You know, you re repeat something long often enough, enough, often enough, no matter if it's true or not, people they start believe believing. It. Exactly. It, right? so, here we go. So, so, all right, we are here for something other than to rib each other. Why are we here today, Dave? Oh, uh, <laughs> we are here to answer this question. Okay, this is a really really important question. Like everyone has been important, but this can be one of the most important ones. The right, question is. is how do I find a good mastermind group? Oh, well, it's an important one. It's one we receive regularly. Yeah. So I guess it's on a lot of people's minds. I'm surprised that people still are asking this question because there's so many different types of masterminds yeah. that are out there. But what it does, and it kind of hit me when you asked, when you just asked this again, is what this is, what this is implying is not what is a mastermind group? Although I think we ought to answer. I think the key word here is how do I find a good, good mastermind yeah. group? So yeah. because there's such a proliferation of them, um, there's tons of them out there and I've seen them. I have been on them. I've been invited to come speak to them. We've um, held them. You have too. Yeah. Um, we've seen online ones and um, I could tell yeah. you the, the sad truth is there are a lot of crappy ones out there. And I think it's because missing expectations right mm -hmm. so maybe that's what we ought to talk about is what are, what are, what expectations do you have for mastermind group okay and we can touch on that a little bit but maybe dave what we ought to do is describe what the heck is a mastermind group you know i think the term was coined by napoleon hill a long time ago you know he wrote think and grow rich and um uh, law of success and um he was really talking about these guys like who the heck was it Edison and some of the Henry Ford and you know a lot of these real brainiacs at the time used to get together on a regular basis and spend time with each other and share knowledge and you know failures and you know uh, share connections and network with each other and it's really funny because you can just google that you know um, and you'll see pictures of them hanging out and talk about what they used to talk about but napoleon hill kind of described it as just like some talked about where two minds meet you know they create this energy i don't remember exactly what it is but he's talked about this intangible force you know that, that would yeah. happen almost like a third mind right here exactly right? and it's kind yeah. of what what it is um when you're in a good one and i can tell you i've been in bad ones before like i paid for those that are like twenty five thousand dollars a year Years ago, I was in a $50,000 a year one. I've been in ones that are like $50 a month. <laughs> yeah. And pricing doesn't have anything to do with how good some of these are. That's right. I've been to free ones that have been as powerful for me as the ones I was paying $50,000 a month. What I was paying for, not a month, $50,000 a year. What you oftentimes get with those really high-end ones, Dave, mm -hmm. if you don't have a good facilitator, you're at least getting access to other rock stars that you might not get otherwise. It's almost like, what's what's really the difference between a Harvard MBA and an MBA at, I don't know, na name a top state school? Um, you could say like uh, around here, a top UCLA. one might be Cal State Fullerton. Cal State Fullerton. You know, what you, you know what the difference is, they say? It's the network. 
Yes, absolutely. It's the it's the alumni association that you're tapping into, right? Um, but really, masterminds is just a place where you go, and it's uh, an intentional place to share information and knowledge, and to serve each other, to cheer each other on, to share best practices, to hold a certain level of accountability um, with each other, and to have this shared interest of helping everyone in the group succeed. Because as the members of your mastermind group succeed, guess what? They're learning things and they come back and share that stuff with you. You know, and you're all invested in each other's success. Now, I've seen I've seen some people, Dave, call a 75 person event a mastermind. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's yeah. not a mastermind. That's a summit. That's a seminar. Yeah, that's something exactly. else. Generally, a mastermind is generally 10 to 12, generally not more than 15 people. Because yeah, a well-run mastermind allows yeah. for each person to participate in it. So I think that's generally what a mastermind is. Uh, you may want to add more color to that, Dave, from your perspective. But um, I, I think that pretty much captures what it is. And then we can talk about how do you find a good one. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and I like how Napoleon Hill kind of describes it. But like everything in life it seems like there's a lot of roots that go back to ancient writings and yes, there's a couple of great sure. um scriptures from the bible that really talk about this as well um like ecclesiastes 4 12 says um the one may be overpowered two can defend themselves a cord of three strands is not quickly broken right mm -hmm. so they're talking about strength in numbers and that's yes, really sure. um larry when we went you talked about our have you talked about our book club today? I don't think so yet, but yeah, I did. But oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> zone out whenever I talk, Dave. Just feel free to zone you out. Say something, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. it's been a long day for both of us. Yes. Um, but remember, one of the first books we did was Brain Rules, and it That's talks great. about how um we work better, we get great strength when we're working with other people people absolutely you know us as individuals you know they're the the tiger or the elephant you know the you know the bull in the ring they can kick our butts on an individual basis but mm -hmm. once we get two or three of us gathered together we are amazingly strong that's right and, ta and can that. tackle anybody in anything yeah. and so that's kind of uh in a way um you know what happens in a mastermind I mean, yeah. Jesus talks about where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them, right? And mm -hmm. it's in Matthew 18. Yeah. So we really need to remember in our minds that there's a lot more power when we get together in smaller groups of people. Larry, you talked about the mastermind having, a you know, 75 people. I did listen to that one. <laughs> 75 or sometimes even more they call it masterminds which they're, yeah. which they're not so you yeah. really got to get into a smaller group of people the question is what group of people do you want to get with right yeah, yeah. well another so question i think would be like in what area of my life could i possibly even use a mastermind yeah you know these things are so powerful you, you can think think uh you know the um the fitness company beach body and they do all these oh, different yeah. programs what's that oh yeah i'm, I'm agreeing with you yeah i remember they, they have what could be considered a mastermind they build a community and then you break it they break it down into smaller groups you share ideas you share successes you cheer each other on there's a little bit of education that goes on and i think that some of the best masterminds are those that have some education some accountability some goal setting um and some one on time where each member gets to share something that's going on in their life, because what we call it biggest challenge, opportunity, or idea with the group, where the group can then brainstorm that and help come up with a uh, action plan to address that challenge, opportunity, or idea. I think having done thousands of mastermind sessions over the years, and I mean, so like for the last, probably did my first quote unquote real mastermind 30 years ago. Um, so I've done a lot of them. I think the one, the one, the most successful ones include those kind of elements: some education, some accountability, um, some opportunity to cheer each other on, opportunity for each person to share the biggest challenge, opportunity, an idea, um, and sometimes even bringing in a guest speaker or something like that. So th I think those are good. But it could be fitness related for your life. It could be something financial. It could be professional and entrepreneurial right 
there are some masks. So I like the ones mostly, honestly, if I'm thinking about the entrepreneurial space, where it's one mastermind with people from a bunch of different industries. Mm, yeah. I love those yeah. because I can learn from other industries and then I can apply it because you don't get the typical silo thinking that if it's in just one industry. Now, there are some very successful industry specific masterminds. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there are even career or job responsibility specific masterminds. This is just for bookkeepers. This is just for whatever, mm -hmm. you name it, right? But the idea here is you're going to have to think about like, what, what do I want to get out of this mastermind, handsome Dave? Why yeah. do I really want to go uh, to this? Yeah, exactly. You got to do a little bit of self-reflection. Yeah, exa exactly. I mean, those are some great, those are some great guidelines, you know, and, and, you know, we got a few extra ones in there other than what you've said. And, and Larry, you, you kind of summed it up really well. And that's one of the reasons why we, when we run our masterminds, we do as much as we can to incorporate all of those um, elements together. Yeah. Because it really makes it, really makes it effective. Yeah. Um, but knowing you, Dave. Yeah. As I do, I'm going to guess you've prepared for this. I'm going to guess you actually have some bullet points on what it takes to find a good mastermind. Am I right? Ding, 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 ding. Uh, Mr. Engineer. <laughs> okay. So let's go through a couple of these and maybe we can okay. just chat about them. All right. Okay. What do you got? All right. So the first one is a group where you feel comfortable participating. Oh, now, geez, so there's a caveat to that, I think, right? Because anytime if you're joining a mastermind and the very first time you go in, um, you're going to be uncomfortable because you're not going to know the people, right? But that hopefully that feeling goes away pretty quickly and the facilitator um, establishes in the room pretty much from the get-go or even beforehand establishes a sense of uh, a safety and comfortableness. I mean, if they don't, then consider going elsewhere. Well, and you need to define what does safety mean, right? But I think it's yeah. even more important trust yeah right yeah. trust um needs is, is important and one of the ways we try to do that um dave in our masterminds is consider before we bring in a new member is consider the existing members is this going to be a good personality fit yes to the room? what value are they going to be bringing to the, this new member to the group um and frankly in order to build trust what we try to not try what we do is um, we have everyone sign an NDA and confidentiality agreement so that new team members trust that they can be vulnerable so that someone's not going to go do a social media post that Larry was crying in the mastermind today <laughs> or that Larry is going to steal Handsome Dave's yeah. idea and do an end run and launch a business to compete with them. Yeah. Right. And so the facility, I would not even, I, I wouldn't join a mastermind unless I was assured that there was a level of confidentiality with anything that was discussed. Yeah. There. Agree with you. Agree. So that, that I think will help with the comfort. I think that's a good one, Dave. Okay. Well, let's go to the second one. It would be a group where you're not the smartest person in the room. Mm. Right. I mean, if, if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're going to end up being giving all your energy and ideas and time to everybody else, which is okay. Yeah. But that's not why you should be joining a mastermind. The, you join a mastermind because you want to be lifted up to the um, overall level of the group, right? Yeah, I remember one of the masterminds that I was in. This was years ago. Um, we had just broken the million dollar uh, a year mark, and um, we we're the smallest by a long shot. I think the next one was doing over five million, right? And um, because I was taking all of these brainiac these great experienced people and there, and there were a lot of gray-haired people i didn't have any gray hair back then um <laughs> i was taking a lot of their ideas and implementing it we grew very quickly and in short mm -hmm. order and i say short order maybe uh, a matter of uh, five years i became the largest company in the room and i felt like i was always the one feeding everyone else and i had outgrown the group you know um and that was just the way I was feeling. I wouldn't feel that same way today because there's other ways. Again, this was 30, 25 years ago. I've changed, right. by the way. I'm not who I used to be, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't judge me um, But um, on that. But at the time, I was feeling like I'm just, I'm giving more than I'm getting at this point. And, yeah. um, which is not a bad place to be if that's what your intention is. But that was not what I needed at the time, you know? I needed people further down the path than I was. 
Exactly. So. Exactly. Anyway, so okay. that's a good one, Dave, about being the smartest person in the room. So yeah. that's one. So we got one and two. Number three is a group with a facilitator or leader has experience in accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, and in, in, in a lot of our masterminds, Larry, I mean, you've had experience in building businesses, multiple sizes and all kinds of different industries. Um, so you've you had that experience in accomplishing what pretty much everybody came there therefore, right? If you, yeah. if you go, I mean, the, the, the level of the leader in the group is going to raise everybody else's level. So they should be pretty much up there. One of the things that just cracks me up and um, I mean, I don't want to disparage anybody, but you know, somebody who's doing leading a mastermind when there's, you know, they're very young and don't have experience and haven't done anything. They're just asking as facilitators, I think that's shortchanging. I think you're shortchanging yourself. You can find something better than that. Yeah. Let me just put a little different spin on that. It's yeah. not a bad thing if you're a fourth grader and your mastermind members are first graders. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of my mantras is that fourth graders look like gods <laughs> to first graders. Right. So what am I just saying? The fourth graders are a little bit further down the road than the first graders. The fourth graders look like idiots to eighth graders. The fourth graders aren't even on the radar of the 12th graders. Yeah. Right. But if you are a 12th grader and you're trying to go to a mastermind that the fourth grader is facilitating, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. I agree. Right? agree. So don't discount. I guess my point is on, on this. Um, yeah. Don't, don't discount the age. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was an example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, no, I, yeah. I get it. If they are indeed further down the path than you are yeah. yeah so that that's really what it is it's somebody's got to be further down the path further down the path yeah, yeah. there you go that's good uh, yeah like i couldn't go in and effectively facilitate a mastermind with elon musk jeff bezos <laughs> you know tim cook if they were all in the mastermind i i wouldn't I, I probably wouldn't could. be a good facilitator. What's that? I wonder who could. <laughs> I wonder who could. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Well, so the next was we talked about confidentiality agreements. You got to make sure that those are there, Larry. That was great that you brought up the NDA and people need to be signing it and knowing that everybody in the group signs it, right? Yeah. So the NDA, but I think, by the way, it's a non-disclosure agreement. But yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, and but I think it also goes beyond that in that, I mean, one of the first things that you end up saying in our groups is that what is said here stays here, mm -hmm. right? So it's, you're signing a piece of paper, which is important, but it's also important to have all that stuff stated verbally. And everybody in the room is reminded and, and they nod and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I like it. Yeah. So let's go to the fifth one is really um, the fifth one is a group with common goals, right? Oh. So, I mean, they all should, you, you guys, you're, you're going in, you want to improve your business or your, or your health or whatever, but there really needs to be a commonality uh, or a common um, mind of you guys wanting to improve and willing to do what's necessary to improve. Right. If you got somebody, we've had masterminds where we've had somebody, sitting in the back with their arms crossed. And I think we had one time where a couple of times, uh, well, a couple, maybe once where one of the sessions, somebody came in drunk. Remember that? They didn't last. Yeah, it didn't last. It wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. No, it wasn't good. And it just reflects, it reflects poorly on, on the, it reflected poorly on us, but really it reflected poorly on them. Of but course. the hard, th the bad thing about it is they just couldn't contribute or get anything else um, out of the group. Yeah. Out of the group. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Okay. This is one of the reasons why Dave, I think there is, I do believe in pain for um, yeah. mastermind groups because people are vested. Yeah. They have skin in the game. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen a lot of free masterminds that have really been worthy of the stuff that we're, we provide in, in our masterminds. Yeah. I mean, there are some people who call it, they call them masterminds where they get on and I, I, I don't want to get into it, but anyway, anyway, <laughs> I was going to yeah. go negative for a second. I don't, I don't want to go there. Yeah. Not, okay. Go there. All right. What else you got for us? 
Okay, well, the uh, next one is number six, is a group where the participants have the ability to make the changes needed from the discussion about their life and or business. All right, so, so yeah, does let's this talk about mean that. something like they get a great idea mm -hmm. from the mastermind session, they go back and all of a sudden they don't really have the authority, I'm thinking in the business arena, they don't yeah. have really have the authority to implement it or exactly. it's poo-pooed or shot down by someone else in the organization. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. could be a problem. Yeah. Cause it's, I mean, it's, it's not only a waste of their money, but when you're coming in and because you want to be within a group of people that are making changes and making improvements, cause that's yeah. going to inspire you to take action and, and, you know, and make you, and there'll be examples to you and they will help you to get to the next level as well by seeing their success. Because I guess what I would do to see success together, right? I guess what I would do is if, it's, if this happened in one of our masterminds, I think what I would say was walk me through how you pitched this idea mm -hmm. to your supervisor, yeah, or to your team, or to your investor, or whoever it is that's being the roadblock, right? Yeah. Did you pitch the benefits of this? You know, there there are ways to pitch a new idea or program so that's well received. Versus just, eh, no, I do get your point though, Dave. It's a whole lot easier if you are participating or if you are playing with willing participants. When you remember, to... I remember one situation where we had uh, um, someone in and they wanted to make some changes, uh, but they it was really hard because their partner wasn't participating with us. And then the next- Are you talking about our Texas-based organization? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. And then our next go around, both this person and the partner came together in the mastermind. And then boom, you know, they just, it was like being shot out of a cannon because they were both able to see things um, the same way and yeah. agree. Right. And had we not, had they not done that together and we actually did the strength based testing that we did. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what happened, folks, without giving away too much here. The person who first started with us was not the CEO of the organization, but was built like a CEO. Yeah. And the other person was built more like a salesperson and not a CEO. Mm -hmm. And so through the course of a year, we developed a strategic plan to have them switch roles as well. Imagine that. Yeah. A CEO willing to move out of the CEO position and more into a sales and biz dev role where someone who is a partner, but a could, could technically be considered a minority partner and moved into a CEO role. Yeah. But because of that, that business has done really well. Done really well. I'll, yeah. we'll, we'll leave it at that. But that's that's a good one to share, Dave. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Good. All okay. Right. What else? Uh, number seven is a group where people hold each other accountable. Yeah. Yeah. So what's that look like? Well, that looks like th what this implies then is that as a mastermind group, you set goals and expectations for each other that you're going to accomplish before the next mm -hmm. session, right? It also implies that when you come to the next session, you talk about what have you accomplished since the last <laughs> one, right? Right. Um, the best ones that we've seen, I can think of a few, Dave, where people on their own have developed small accountability groups inside the mastermind where they they touch base on a weekly basis. They yeah. don't get they don't touch base. Hey, how was your week? How is mama doing? How's the dog? No, they get on and they get right to it. And the accountability session can last last just a few minutes. Yeah. Did you get it done? No. Why not? What do you need to do to get it done? Great. Go do that. Yeah. And it's a 10 minute call each week. Yeah. Five minutes for each person. Yeah. Then, and that kind of thing has got to be um, encouraged by the facilitator and everybody needs to participate in something like that. I mean, if you, if you really want to make progress in your goals, you really got to have somebody holding you accountable. Yeah. At some point. That's, that's good. That's good. And then the uh, last one, number eight in the list is a group where vulnerability is praised. All right. So that's a good one, but I can think of another one that I want to add on uh, sure. to the end of this. So don't drop off yet, folks. Um, <laughs> but no, I think that you're right. Vulnerability needs to be praised because what you find is once somebody goes vulnerable, you give other people permission 
yes. to be vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what I have found in many of the, at least the good ones that I have been, been in, it's the appropriate level of vulnerability. Really what we're talking yes. about is authenticity and transparency here, probably, mm -hmm. Dave, right? Yeah. Because why go if you're not going to be real? For the most, for many folks who go to these, at least these entrepreneurial and CEO ones, we don't have other people in our lives, for most of us, where we can share our fears, our challenges, you know, we're out there, we, many of us fake it most of the time in front of our team members, in front of our significant others, in front of our um, clients, that we got it all together, we got it figured out, don't worry, we're good. But in reality, we're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And so when you've got a level of vulnerability and the trust and the confidentiality that we're talking about, for many of us, these masterminds turn into almost like a board of advisors. Yes. And that's really powerful. Yeah, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us your number nine. Number nine would be, and this is one of the ones that I'm so glad that we started doing this. And I know you were, I remember you being happy when we did it as well. I think the best masterminds are those that are a no selling zone. Oh yeah. Right. So what the heck do you mean by a no selling zone, Larry? Well, let me, before I answer that, I've been to masterminds where you know that the intent of the person that of some of the people that are there is to sell their products and services. Mm. And the first thing they do is they're getting that business card in your hand and, oh, I got a product for that, or I've got a service for that. We don't allow that in our masterminds, right? Because yeah. it puts people on edge and they're defensive and they don't, I don't want to talk to that person because they're always selling to me. So what we tell people is you cannot be a seller, but you can be a buyer. Mm hmm so what does that mean? Well, it would mean <clears throat> if Dave and I are in the same mastermind and Handsome Dave is constantly offering great suggestions and he's full of integrity and he's positive, he's upbeat and he's, you know, doing all the great things that we've been talking about so far. And I know that, hey, he happens to ha happens to have an amazing website development company and I need my website developed. I can approach Dave and say, Dave, I know that you're great love you, see what you're doing, help me with my website if you could. I want to I want to buy or invest in your services, right? But if I happen to mention, oh, my website's not optimizing, Dave can offer suggestions on it, but Dave cannot say, buy my services. It's yeah. only, it's a mere whatever, $9.99 a month, and I can handle all your problems and make them go away. Cannot be a seller. I mean, yeah, you cannot be a seller, but you can be a buyer. So how do you be a how do you make sure that people buy from you? By showing up, providing excellent value to everyone that else that's in the mastermind, yeah. being a give good person. First. Give first. Give first. That's right. Yeah. So that's what I would say would be number nine. And number and nine. Let me tailgate on that a little bit is we have had some folks, we don't have people selling, but we have had folks buy from each other. Oh, yeah. And often. And, yeah, it happens a lot. And I can't think of any situation where it was it was a bad outcome. No, because they got to know each other first and exactly. see each other in action. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so that's really the, yeah, that's the best way to approach it. Yeah, that was a good list, Dave. Thank you. <clears throat> that was a good list. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to add? You added in a number nine, but anything well, else? Well, I think I added after? stuff in the beginning too. I added a little you value did. today, didn't I? Oh yeah. Here and there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's yeah. close this one out. All right. Um, well, thanks folks for joining us. And remember building a team is the way to reclaim your freedom. And we're here to help you with our course community, our white glove service, where we find a rock star VA for you. But we would also encourage you to attend our free book club. Um, you can register for that. You'll see it in the, the links below. Um, but that's an easy way to connect with us on a free yeah. basis. We do this at least once a month where we take a business book or some book similar to that, some book that's going to provide amazing value to you. And you don't even have to read the book, but we give you the guts of it, the great parts of it. So like I said, you don't even have to read the, the book. So check the link below this uh, about how to register for that. Um, but we really want to grow our podcast here. We'd really love for you guys um, to help us do that. So make sure that you subscribe to it on your phone, your Android or your iPhone. And then on YouTube, hit the little subscribe button there. Uh, click on the little bell to get reminders. And then, of course, give us a rating. We'd love to have five stars, of course, but give us what you 
want to uh, give us and leave a comment, ask a question. We want to get the word out. And then finally, um, you can go to hiremyva.com to get in contact with us, see more about our course and community, our white glove service. Um, and, you know, we just love to connect with you there. So remember, even without experience, when it comes to Hire My VA, you're going to learn how to prepare for hire and thrive with those virtual assistants. Larry, we help a lot of folks in all kinds of different ways, and we want to help uh, you guys too. So um, go to HireMyVA.com for more information on that, and then uh, look at the link below for um, where you can join our book club. All right, my friends, that's it for the day. God bless you. God keep you. God hold you. All right, go do something significant today. See you later. Okay. Bye, Bye everybody.